Here is a snail mail envelope from Cynthia Lee. She's one of our admin in the Art and Success Pro membership group. And I was able to get two uh, pieces out of her letter and everything that she sent to me. And you know, what really, what I loved about um, getting her letter, you know, not only was it fun to read, and she even said, gosh, if I need more paper, I can, you know, she'd send it to me from Chicago because she has all this lovely, um, rice paper and collage paper and that sort of thing. But you can see again that what I loved about what I got here was her handwriting. I just found it to be beautiful. Again, I love marks. And so I'm always paying attention to when people actually do the handwriting. And I took several pieces out of here and then she sent me some very beautiful, unique pieces. Some are, you know, most are handmade um, like this. What I did with all of this, the first one, this is number 20. Um, what I did was she, she also loves poetry and she included this portion of a poem which says, ocean of land, rolling cresting waves of earth, smoky blue, beneath ancestor clouds. She's a wonderful writer and poet as well as artist. And so I wanted to include that part, which is so much a part of Cynthia. And then this little scribbly thing, she loves asymmetric writing and then her own writing. And notice that this is basically high key against high key. And this is mid-tone. Um, this is part of that askew square that I made very large that covers like the perimeter of it is like 36 by 36 inches. Well, I found some of her greens that I thought would go really nicely on that stripe. That was some of her rice paper. And then here's her name. The other piece that I made from her envelope she had some interesting stamps and this is part of that polka dot grid again and she had uh, stamps that I thought would look nice on here again with her handwriting so I kind of cut out chunks of the um, after I did the larger punch I cut a section out to go around these dots these dots have her swatches on them and I just thought that was really cool all right tiny little envelope um, pretty stamp looks like an allium plant perhaps and all the way from New Hampshire, this is Stephanie Wells, and this became piece number 22. She had these neatly folded pieces of wax paper and her samples inside. And I did use quite a bit of her samples, so there's not much left. But she had a little note inside. Well, she had a little pocket inside where she kept more of her samples. So, there was a lot of pieces that were just very interesting and I used almost all of her things. What did I do with them? In this case, uh, and this was piece number 22, um, there was such a wide variety of things she sent me. Um, but what I saw that was in common with you know a majority of them was that they were hand done, handmade by her. Um, these are all hand painted and she had already cut them out. Um, this one has a piece on top of a piece. This one I tore a little bit off. Um, this guy here, I cut that chunk out of here. And because uh, if you look at all the things she sent to me, um, yeah, they have some things in common. I mean, you know, the hand painted nature of most of these. Uh, but this one is like a stencil transfer, and that's the photocopy, and that's her signature, and, you know, some little blotches on white. So they didn't have a totally like a lot in common with each other aside from the warmth and a relative size but then partly i cut them down to size if they weren't if they were too big or whatever but again the grid composition is wonderful for being able to make sense and allow you to appreciate kind of these really different things and you because they're in a grid it's not like any one particular one gets more attention than the other I mean, you can certainly have focuses, focal points within the grid, but for the most part, it's like it's everybody's created equal, right? And it allows you to really, it allows the viewer to appreciate these really different things um, as they travel through the composition. So that's one reason why I love the grid, because sometimes you have these things that are very disparate, could be color, shape, texture direction, size, and you can throw it all into a grid and it actually makes sense. So that was a really fun one. Another petite envelope from Susie Rakowski in Colorado. She's practically a neighbor of mine. And I had a lot of fun with this. I opened it up and you know she had this nice little card. 
And uh, what she said here was, I chose these pictures of faces, for they all depict feelings. I have missed this form of communication during COVID. Wishing you much joy. And she signed her name. Now, these are two little faces. Now, I didn't happen to use these, but that gives you an idea of two human faces. But the rest of her samples were not of, they were not faces that came from people. And this is Susie Rakowski. This is her piece. Um, now it became number 23. So she sent me those two little human faces, but you know, um, I'm really glad she sent me all these kind of cartoon um, faces because they were so much fun. They, they were such a diversion from everything else I've been receiving. I've been getting a lot of, you know, handmade things and they're all beautiful, but then you get this and it's like, oh, that's really different. So fun. And then I cut part of her card um, to make the grid marks. They're imperfect. It, it wasn't measured or anything like that. I wanted it to be kind of just um, the way it was. And I just cut these to be um, approximately close in size. This one being a little bit of an outlier. And then I worked in her name here, Susie Rakowski. And again, you know, when you put some of these together, um, these are two grids, but it's always fun then to take a look at how this whole process is unfolding. And, you know, it's, it doesn't, it really almost doesn't matter at this point, you know, how I put them together. I think they're just working, which is kind of surprising to me because they are each so unique and so different. But now this, these dot pieces will end up going however they go. I don't know, maybe this, um, that's not how they connect. You know, there's an actual, these are all numbered, so they go in a certain way. But anyways, these are two of my dotted pieces, and this is part of my uh, askew square. And, um, you know, here's one of the, the red and white, the two reds for the grid. So you can kind of see how things are developing, but pretty soon I'm going to start to put these on to the back um, piece, the six foot by six foot diptych, and see how they're starting to look together. So I'm first going to have to map out a grid on that piece um, very lightly with pencil because I don't really want it to show. And then I'll start to be able to put these up with tape on the back and start to move them around and see how they look the best. So that's kind of the fun part. 